Welcome back. Last week, we spoke on This is the song Choosing between two moods. So, there's the So mood A is comprised of the notes C, D flat, E flat, and E, or C, C sharp, D sharp, and E. While mood B adds this B flat to it. And so far the B flat is only being played below this C. So today, we're going to write down the figures that we realize we're sort of naturally drawn to in the song. So, I have my drawn staff paper here, because I didn't actually have staff paper on me. And we're going to turn this off really quick so it doesn't make too much noise while we're sitting here writing these down. So on the bass clef, we're going to write the C and the C sharp that we've been alternating between. And that would be all cows eat grass. So we have this C here, and we're just going to draw them as whole notes. So in order to show a sense of variation, so we don't really get ourselves confused, I'm actually going to write the next, uh, the inharmonic above C as D flat. So now we have C, and we have D flat. It's easy to tell which pitch is which, because they're on totally different lines. Now. For figure one, which was the figure we started with, we're going to write the C and D sharp we played, which was mm, this is the song. So let's just put it at a tempo of 90. And let's just say we're in 4-4 for right now, so while these are going to be whole notes, um, which is pretty inaccurate if we write the rest of it as quarter notes when they were keeping the same thing. So we're actually going to write these as whole notes too, just to keep it, you know, keep these notes at the same duration as one another. So that would be uh, D is here. I don't remember the um, mnemonic device for the lines, but I do know which note goes on each line. So this would be D flat, D flat, C, and C. What is the mnemonic device for these? So this is E, G, B, D, F. Every girl, baby, does fine. <laughs> there really is like a, a mnemonic device to remember the name of these lines. We're gonna stick with every girl baby does fine because I cannot remember what it is. Or maybe every good boy does fine. So if you're a girl you can go with every girl baby does fine. If you're a boy you can go with every good boy does fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put what the note is what the pitch is supposed to be correlated to on these lines, on the line. So we don't have to worry about it at all. Every good baby does fine. So now we know which line coordinates to which note. So next for our second figure, 
I'm going to go figure two. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go figure one A and figure two A. So we have, and I'm going to turn the keyboard back on here so we can remind ourselves what figures we were playing in our right hand. This is the song, which is absolutely true. Then we sort of just alternated those two notes. This is the song, free improvisation between those two notes. You can play those liberally. And I'm actually going to write that in the text. So free improv uh play or maybe alternate notes notes liberally i'm like writing over everything but it's fine free improv alternate notes liberally so this is the song this is the So one thing, as we have these written as whole notes, but I recognize as I'm playing them, I'm playing them in different rhythms. And so with different uh, note durations. So one other comment I could write on the staff above it or below it, but likely above because above the staff you write like directions to the performer, like rubato, which is like to play a little off tempo, not not off tempo, but like slightly off beat, you know, like cantabile, like song, like you know. Um, you would write those directions above the staff, and then things like dynamics, like crescendo, diminuendo, ritardando, which is to slow down. Actually, you would write ritardando above too. You would sort of like slowly slow down what you were playing. You would write those things above the staff, but the dynamics below the staff. Piano, fortissimo, things like that. Um, so one thing that I recognized I was doing was sort of playing different rhythms. So I could leave it as free improv, but I would like to define free improv either somewhere else on the sheet or above this staff where these notes are written. But I will write a key on the back. That's right. I drew these lines myself, obviously. Write a key on the back for myself, referring to what free improv involves uh, any variation of note duration and note entrance stick to just these two notes so if I wanted this to basically be a piece that was imp improvised between figures. So between figure 1A and figure 2A, I could advise them to play this for a certain amount of time. Let's say play for a minute and a half. Just dance between those two notes for a minute and a half. Then move on to figure 2, which you would play for two minutes, right? You play that one for two. I'm just going to write in this. You will play that one for two minutes. So the first figure was, this is a song. Then the next one is, this is, wait, no, what was it? This is a song. Or you could go, this is, this is a song. Ultimately, I could give them a new rhythm to use. Which actually makes a little bit more sense. So in order to like ease some of the confusion that could be brought on by saying free improv involves any variation of note duration and note entrance, that can be confusing. So let's say that by improvising on this figure, the notes in this figure, that means 
that you can change up when you play it again. So you don't have to play it back to back or you can play it back to back or you yeah, just like you, know, you don't have to play it back to back. You can play it back to back, but stick to this rhythm and this order. I also wrote here alternate notes liberally, but I think I'm going to change my mind on that. I'm going to write not free rhythm and alternate notes liberally, but um, repeat. I'm going to write this in front of you guys. Repeat phrase. Do we want to call it a phrase? Do we want to call it a motif? Do we want to call it measure? Repeat this figure, this figure, um, at will for one and a half minutes. So there we go. Now I know this is a lot of scribble scratchle, which is fine. Just got to get that scribble scratch right out of there. And prayerfully, we hope that the performer can read what we're speaking on. Repeat this figure at will for a minute and a half. And we also have our minute and a half mark here. So, do I have a timer? I don't have a timer on me. So I'm just gonna look at the recorded mark on this camera where I'm recording it and play this for a minute and a half. We know our bass figure. And we know that these notes are equal to one another. So we're gonna stick with that and just repeat that figure at will. Let's give it a try in five, four, three, two, one. No, sorry, slow. So that's the first taste of, I'll say, what could be the first two minutes of the song. I recognize that I did play with this rhythm a little bit, and also I'm not playing it at the exact same pace as this one. So I'm going to mark these as half notes to mark, hey, you're playing these at half the speed that you're playing these at. And the only reason these aren't like right above or next to one another is because this is ostinato, so we know that's what we're playing in the bass. Whereas these things will change at will. They're given a certain duration that they must be played, but you can play them basically however style you like for like a minute and a half or two minutes. So I'm going to try playing it another way so you get more of what I'm saying. like 
I'm not necessarily letting any interests pull on me. I'm just gonna go for it. It's different from the way I did it before. myself when I'm playing them like right next to each other I find that I can bring this figure back later in the song and give them the instructions of now play right next to each other I can use the same figure at another time in the song and give them another instruction whoever the performer may be and I also recognize that I can hear my left hand fighting to be heard it's almost as though the right hand has all this attention like Oh yeah, no, you're going to hear them regardless. And it almost feels like the left hand has to like grow in volume to be heard or understood or be present at all. And it's doing the exact same thing. It's just sort of like less needy, but it like feels the need to make itself present by being louder. So that's the first figure, figure 1A. Now the second figure, as we were speaking of, will involve the E, the E natural. So it's going to go. So we are going to write. C, D flat, C, so that way it's not C, C sharp, C natural, as few in harmonic as possible, or, you know, alterate, what are they called? As few, um, like, I don't know, alterations <laughs> to the, to the notes about in front of them, whatever they're called, as possible on the line, so that way it doesn't really get confusing. This is the song. Now, I actually am going to write a natural sign in front of this E because at some point I'm going to be involving an E flat in here. And I also just want to punctuate that you are playing E natural. I just want that to definitely be a part of the performer's attention. I want them to have their attention on playing the E natural. Now, this thing here, if I'm letting this one play, for a minute and a half and I'm letting this play this E natural figure play for two minutes I'm thinking either I would have the same figure played with an E flat for right after it played for the same amount of time or cut this amount of time in half to where they're playing it with the E natural for one minute and then dot 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 playing that figure that's, that looks like I'm writing B, but I'm really writing C, D flat, C, and E flat right after it. So we're going to see how that sounds. Not starting from figure 1A, but starting from figure 2A. Same bass, just playing these figures for the duration uh, markdown. It's a random duration, but we're just going to give it a try.
The one thing I'm picking up on while I'm repeating that is that it needs to land someplace. So while it goes all the way up to this E, the next part of that figure, instead of it being a four note phrase, it should be an eight note phrase and not an alter alternating phrase, but like instead a phrase that loves, this is a song. Oh, so then a six note phrase. So it doesn't include this, but it should go up to there, then come back down. So we're actually just gonna X out this staff since I've written all over it. Start over, put figure 2A, C, D flat, C, E natural, uh, then D flat, oh, back to C. So what I'm curious about is, will this feel natural? Will this feel sort of like, I'm still going to leave the dots for if you want to sort of just leave it lingering and, and hanging in the air versus if you want to bring it down, remind us, this is the song, just basically centering around keeping the idea focused, keeping some sort of focus to the idea. So we're going to give it a try. I'm going to put these right here. So I'm like, so I know what I'm looking at. Actually, I'm going to put it on my left. So I know what I'm looking at. I'm just going to give it a try for two minutes. I'm actually at, I actually am going to start from figure 1A this time. So it sounds like it's leading in from that first figure to the second figure. So. What I recognize is, since no one in the audience knows the song yet, I really want the rhythm that the right hand figures are played, I really want that to be whole notes too. I want that to be at the same length as the notes being played in the bass, so that way you can get an understanding of what the song is and also a minute and a half feels like a really short introduction it's funny because it's like it's only these two notes but it's like it doesn't give you enough time to get to know the song before you tell me what the song is like i don't even know what the song is yet and you're already about to change the notes and to tell me that this is the song. That's not the song. The song was just this other thing. So you can't tell me that the song should that the song is about to include this or not just 
You just been doing this for three minutes straight. You can't tell me that the song includes this. Not yet. So this song is going to be a fun, minimal work of art. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just going to really take its time. We know what the song is. So now we, as composers, can mess around and decide who we're telling the song to. What kind of audience members do we expect to want to get to know the song? Those are the audience members I am writing this song to.